All right, hello. Um, welcome to, uh, to Robotics 102, Introduction to AI and Programming. This is for the fall 2021 semester. Uh, I'm Chad Jenkins, Professor Chad Jenkins at the University of Michigan. Um, and so now we're gonna talk about, uh, about um, C++ functions and so how we can use them uh, not only in our daily lives, but also uh, to make our robots do interesting things. And so, um, so I just wanted to give a, just a refresh about where we're where we are and where we're going. And so, uh, so we have what's coming up, Project One, which is the wall follower. We're going to be able to get this robot to follow walls uh, around an enclosure. And in order to do that, we've got to be able to understand uh, all the stuff that's happening inside the code that makes these robots run. Um, and so, in that regard, we need to be able to. Um, we need to be able to make sure that these robots, uh, these that we can that we're fluent in C++, which is the the basic language, the basic way we express uh, what we want robots to do. Um, there we go. And so, uh, so we think of our list of uh, of of concepts of ideas in C++ that we have to we have to be able to understand. Um, and so we've been able to, you know, so we've been able to get through a number of these up to up to this point, so that we can start to have our enable our robots to, to follow walls. Um, and so if we think about where, where we did in the, in the first lecture, we did a hello world. And so that allowed us to go over a program structure and how we compile and execute. Uh, last lecture, we talked about um, basic, uh, um, ba the basic ways we do, uh, we do uh, arithmetic as well as express algebraic, uh, as we as we express algebraic expressions, express algebraic expressions, I don't know. Um, but, uh, but, but basically, how do we deal with, uh, with different types of operators, uh, variable types, and, and we finally got got a way to do to do all of the sort of user input output that we can have from the from the command line. Um, what we have coming up is we're going to we're going to do functions. And so functions are going to allow us to to modularize our code. And so we don't have this big mess of uh, of of code all in our in our source files, um, but we're going to be able to structure it in a little bit cleaner way. And so um, so where we left off was uh, was version 24 iteration 24 of our of our calculator program right here. So I'm just uh, I'm just showing this. And so what we should realize what functions allow us to do is to is to, to to realize that our main is not necessarily itself. The extent of our code of, of our program doesn't have to be doesn't have to reside strictly between uh, strictly in this this section of our of our of our text file that's that's for the sex for the for, that's representing our source code we can actually modularize it in, in different ways um, and functions are what allow us to do this and so really what functions allow us to do is organize our program so that we can have uh, we can we can put it we can put uh, different types of uh, of execution behaviors different types of things that we want the program to do into these nice modules that we could call whenever we need to um, and so it sort of, you know, it just sort of gives us a nice organization. Um, before I go deep into that, I just want to go on a, on a brief tangent and, and ask the question uh, and ask this uh, of, the, of the class or just you just watching. Um, what is, uh, what is, the, what is the, the answer to, this, uh, to this, this question? Or how should I evaluate this mathematical expression? Or maybe a better question is how would C++ evaluate this expression. I'm take a drink real quick. What you think about it? All right. Well, if we go back to uh, to what we learned in, in high school math, or you know, um, that we have, uh, or you know, or some people, you know, middle school math, uh, there's an order of operations. So basically, there is a, you know, we do certain operators in a particular order. We start with, uh, so if there's any exponentials that we take, um, so we're going to perform those first. Then we'll perform multiplication and division operators. Then we'll perform addition and subtraction. And what's even, and what has an even higher priority over, over that are the parentheses. So, you know, so one acronym that people use is, is PEMDAS, which is parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction. Um, and so if we applied that in our, to, to express our, our uh, to evaluate this expression, it's clear that we should do this addition, even though addition is the, low, is, is the lowest on this, um, uh, on this order of operations, uh, it is inside parentheses and parentheses are at the highest one. So that are at the highest. So we can group that together and we could say, this is what needs to be performed first. And so we would take that, uh, we would perform this addition 
and we get a four. Great. And so, you know, but then we get to this issue of, all right, now we've got, a, now our next two operations are perform. One is a division, one is a multiplication. Um, and those are at, at equivalent orders of priority in the, in the order of operation. So the question is, what should I do next? Should I do that division first or should I do this multiplication first? Um, depending on which one you choose, you'll come up with a different answer. So on one, if you do the division first, you'll get 16. If you do the multiplication first, you get one. But is there, is, but, but, and so those are definitely different answers, but which one is the right one or which one would C++ say is the right one? And so uh, to find out, resolve this, this, uh, this ambiguity, I wrote, uh, I wrote a, a little program to just see, see what, uh, what, it would, what it would say. And, uh, and C++ came back to me and said that 16 is the right answer. Um, and so the question is, why is 16 the right answer in this case? Well, um, we should note that the, the way that, that C++ performs, um, performs uh, the, the expresses, uh, it will perform, carry out a, a mathematical evaluation is it will perform the less, most operation of highest precedence. And so that means that the, that, the, that the division comes first because it's the leftmost and then, and then to the right of that is the multiplication. So that means that after, after, doing the, uh, after evaluating the parentheses, we would get a four on the outside, we'd multiply those together and we would get 16. And so there we go, um, believe it. And so, uh, um, and so really this gets to the, uh, so, so C++ as we've, as we've covered thus far has a number of operators and those operators have particular precedent, precedents. Um, so I'm putting the ones that, we, uh, that we've covered in, uh, in you know, in, uh, I've, I've sort of grouped them in, uh, in, in I've highlighted them in, in the red squares here um, or just the squares. Uh, and, uh, and I've grouped them into sort of order which they, from which they're, they're considered. So, so comments, you know, get higher, have highest priority, you comment something out is commented out. Uh, single line comments, parentheses, uh, then, um, and then we'll, we'll cover what the increment and decrement is, but that's a little bit later. And then for arithmetic, we have multiplication, division, modulus, all of them have, the, have equal priority. Um, and then addition and subtraction. We'll get to what these comparison operators are. So that's a, that'll be in a, in, a, in a coming lecture. And then for assignment, we can do the, we can do the equal. And then, you know, if you wanna, if you wanna, you know, you don't have to use these other variables, but you could, these other operators, but you could, but the plus equals will do, will do an addition plus and an assignment all in one. And then you can do the multiply and uh, an assignment all in one. I will let you look at that on your own. Um, but we should note that we should be very careful with, with, uh, with precedence. Um, and so, you know, precedence, you know, will, will produce different types of behavior depending on how, uh, depending on how we structure things. So let me just show an example. And so I'm going to take our calculator. And so this doesn't have, this doesn't relate to our calculator in particular, but we're going to, we're just going to do a, do a branch. And so I'm just, I'm just branching off of what we've done. So this is a digression about operator precedence. It's not going to affect our, how we're going to do our calculator. We're just sort of going off to the side. Um, it's roughly meant, meant to be a get branch that we're not going to merge back in. I'm don't I'm not going any further on that, but just but this just just consider this a digression. Um, so for the, this digression, uh, you know what will be the if I run this code here, what will be the result of this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our two numbers that we've that we have from our calculator. Um, so let me just uh, just annotate on top of that. So I have, so I basically got two numbers. I've got my number and I have my other number. And I wanna take the average of those. So if I wanna take the average, I'm going to add them together, divide by two. That seems, that seems like a reasonable thing to do, right? I, that's, that's, a, that's, that's one way for me to, 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 take, a, to take an average. Um, what happens if I run that in my code? What, what happens then? Well, if I do that, um, this is what I get. And, um, and the reality is, is just, is, is that ain't right. <laughs> it's not right. So if you took the average, if I just went down in pencil and paper and I took the average of 22 and seven, um, I would not get 25.5. Um, what went wrong here? Um, well, the, the reality is, is that what happened is we did, we, com we computed what, what in, what's implied in this is that we, uh, is that because of the order of operations, so let me just draw this. 
there's sort of an implied parenthesis around, around here. So we've grouped it this way because we're gonna perform this division first, right? And so if I took, uh, so if I, if I take seven divided by two, I'm gonna get 3.5. And then when I add it to 22, I get 22.5. Uh, you know, that's a viable computation, but not if I'm, if I want that to be the average of two numbers. So, uh, so how do we fix this? Well, um, so the, the simplest thing we can do is to, uh, is to then just ensure, tell the, tell the, as we did with, uh, as, uh, as Aruka Sensei did for us, um, we can, we can force the, the, um, the, uh, the program to evaluate the addition first by using parentheses. So now we're going to, um, we're going to say, add these two numbers together, then divide by two. And so if we do this, um, we get our proper program output. So 22, um, seven, um, and then we take the average 14 and a half, right? That's the right, that is what we're expecting. We should note that we can do a lot more math than just, uh, than just addition, subtraction, just our arithmetic operators and, uh, and, and doing simple averages like this. Um, if we included what's called the CMath library, uh, we can get functions such as, uh, such as exponentiation and also trigonometric functions, just to name a few. And so, um, so what we have to do for this is we have to wait. Um, and so what we have, so if we had this program right here, so let's say I can do exponentiation. So this is what pow is going to do. And I can do cosine, which is going to be my cosine here. Um, when I run this program, so this time we're going to use, I'm going to use numbers that are a little bit more reasonable because I don't want to take 22 to the seventh power. Um, I'm going to instead ask for two and three. So two is going to be my first number. Three is going to be my, my next number. And so if I then run the average, I'm going to get, you know, the average of two and three is going to be two and a half. Great. Um, now for pow, what it's going to do is take two, which is the first arg arg argument to this function, and take it to the power of three, which is the second argument to this function. And so two to the third is going to be eight. Great. And then, uh, and so I can just do that on pencil and paper. What's gonna be the cosine of, of two? Um, I can't recall that off the top of my head, but, the, but my program says it's this. Um, I'll do a, just a quick check on Google. All right, Google, Google agrees with me up to a certain level of precision. I think Google is using doubles and we're using floats. And so that's why, why, it's, why it's a little bit different, but, but you know, up to a certain level of precision, this is the right answer. And so, um, so in order to get these functions, we have, to, we have to include what's called the CMath library. So the same way that we include it, we include the IR stream library for to get, to get to interact with standard input and standard output, to interact with our, our screen and the user. Um, we can, um, we can, inc we can um, include the CMath library, which includes a, a large number of functions, which exponentiation, which power and, and cosine are, are, are just a few examples of. And so I just took a sampling of this. This is, this is just, trust me, a, just a very small sampling, but we get everything from absolute value, a floating point, uh, floating point remainder, if you want that, uh, min, max, uh, square root, exponential functions, logarithmic functions, trigonometric functions, and a, and, a, and a host of, an, of other things that are just done for us. Um, and so we get that as part of, as part of CMath. Um, to, just take a, to just take some examples of this, so we have, uh, we have power and, and cosine. We should note that in order to use them, what we, what we apply is something that's called a function call. A function call basically says that there's some other code somewhere else that we're going to then pass execution to, to say, go do this thing for me, and then come back and give me a result. And so, you know, so, but the, but we haven't talked about what functions are. So the so logical question is, what is a function? What are these things doing? What, how, why is that, why is that what, what's used in their, in, in code? Um, and before I go into what a function looks like in C++, let me just make the, the argument again, because code is algebra um, or code represents algebra that, um, that our functions in, in um, our functions in C++ you know, are intuitively similar to that of a mathematical function. So if I took cosine, for instance, uh, cosine takes in some parameter, which is gonna be my number, and, it and that really represents some, it, it, it's some function, which we consider f of x. Um, because we know what cosine looks like ahead of time, we can say, well, you know, cosine is gonna be as, as we have our, our parameter that comes in, our input x that comes along and moves along this horizontal axis, 
uh, our, the value of cosine, which is going to be f of x, is going to change along, along the vertical. So that if I'm given a particular number, so let's say that, that I call my function for the particular value of 2, that comes into my, my cosine function. Um, and that, you know, and so that, so then my parameter for, for X takes on the value of two. If I take on, if I take this value and I say, all right, along the X, you know, my values two, you know, where is going to be F of X? Where's going to be, what's going to be my Y value in this case, along the vertical axis? Well, if I evaluate this cosine function at where X equals two, I'm going to get negative 0.416. Uh, and that, that this this uh, this floating point uh, number that's right here, and so that essentially is going to be uh, my function when x is two. I can then take that, and that will then that will then uh, take on the value, and that will be the value that the function returns. And so so then cosine of two is then sort of you know it returns this value, and then that's what's used in my code moving forward. And so so really you know our function can can be like a like a mathematical function. Um, and so then we also can, you know, we can also do the same thing for, for power, um, except in this case for, for power, we don't necessarily know what the, you know, we don't have like a nice expression for co cosine. We don't know what it looks like uh, 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 ahead of time. We have to be, we have to be given our parameters. So in this case, we're going to be given two and three. Um, and so, so once we have these parameters, we can say, all right, um, you know, once we know that three is the exponent, we could say, all right, so, so this is, it's going to be a, it's going to be a cubic. It's going to look, uh, it's going to look something like this. And then we can do the, we can do something very similar. We can say that our X is going to be along, along two. Um, our, we evaluate that we get eight as our, as our, as our, um, as our, uh, as the, uh, as the evaluation of our, of our exponentiation. And then, uh, and then we can, and that eight then is returned and that eight can then be used in our code. That is essentially what happened in the, in the case of our code. And so, uh, so, so these function calls, you know, can be thought of as mathematical functions. We can make our own functions, so we're not restricted to whatever whatever's in the CMath library. So I've created my 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 function, my number, and it really is, you know, for some reason I wanted x squared plus three. All right, that's what I have, and so I can make my own function. And, and in terms of source code, it would look something like this, where I would take. I would take, uh, I would input um, uh, an argument, which would be, uh, I take an input, uh, which would be X. I'm going to then multiply X by itself, add three to it, and that's going to return, uh, that's going to return my value. Um, we should note that, that, um, that, that C++ functions aren't necessarily mathematical functions. So we can't always say this, um, but um, so I could, so I could say, you know, I could have a function that just, instead of doing a mathematical evaluation, it, uh, it just printed a number, it executed some set of statements. And so in this case, it just took in a number, um, it just took in a, a number and then printed it out to, to standard output. And so, so really there's no mathematical definition for that, but it is source code, it is something that our, that our function can, can run. So we should take a look at what C++, you know, what is the anatomy of a, of a C++ function? Um, so when we want to want to want to do this, we a function at its core is a group of statements that are that are executed within their own scope. And so, the so the code block that is that is delimited by these braces will be the statements that are run in sequence by the function when it is called. And so, uh, so in this case, we're just going to run. Uh, we're just going to execute this one statement that does our x squared plus three, and then return that value. Um, these these statements that we run sit inside a uh, a function a function declaration a function definition, um, and so so within that with so so the, so what sits around this to make sure that we can define this this uh, this function properly is we we have to give it a name. So in this case, I give it I give it a name that just is my function. Um, we have to uh, we have to give it an input argument. So we have to say what are the what are the inputs, and each of these inputs will have their own data type because these are these are C variables at the, at the end of the day, or C data types at the end of the day. Um, each argument will have a will have will be instantiated as a local variable inside of the function. So whatever we get as an input, we can then use uh, we can then use that as a variable inside of our inside of our function. Note we can only use it inside of this function. It, it doesn't exist all around the program. But once we have this x, we can then uh, we can have this input. We can then use that to perform our 
uh, we can access that to perform our, our, our within our statements. And then in this case, we're gonna do, we're gonna use that to, to square this input. We're gonna then also have a return value. So that's gonna be, so the function will, will return a value back to the program, to the, to, the, to, the, to the program that called it. And that return value is going to have a particular type. And so in this case, we're gonna assume that our, our return is, is a floating point number, is a real number. Once we've defined what this function is, we can then call this function from another program. So our main function uh, can, can invoke this, uh, the function we've defined called, called my function. So any, any function can invoke uh, any other function. Um, and so in this case, uh, our, our main function is going to then um, is going to is going to then call the function that we've defined. And so this function call inside of it is, is going to then pass execution to uh, to um, to our another function to our to our my function. Um, note with it's going to have an input parameter. So that input parameter in this place is going to be 2.0. So once we once we pass execution to the function, it's going to be passed with with that argument 2.0. As and that's good, and x is going to take on that value of 2.0 once it's once it's passed in. So now program execution sits with once the, inside the function once the once our my function is called. From there, uh, x is going to then execute the execute the 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 statement. Um, it's going to give assuming that x is two uh, has has this particular value, and then it's going to return the the value and pass execution back to the calling function. So at that point, once this is once this happens, uh, this function is evaluated. It it comes back as 7.0, and then uh, and then that that value of 7.0 gets assigned to uh, to the um is then is then given is then assigned to number y through this through this uh, through this assignment. All right. So once we have that. Uh, we can, you know, that is really, you know, this, that's what's happening in our function right here. Uh, these two, you know, where the question is, where do these, where do these functions sit uh, in our, in our code? How do we code them up? Well, you know, really they just sort of sit inside the, the same, the same file. And so, you know, so now I've just created a file. I've just have my, just have my function up here. That's, that's the, that's declaring the function. And then in main, I'm going to then call that function. And that's just a simple program right here. I just called the squared plus three. Um, CPP. And so I run this and I get no errors. Whoops, went too fast. Lost. Um, I went too, and so, uh, so when I run this, I get no errors, but I also get no output. And so, because I have, I've outputted no, um, no, I've put outputted no information. It just runs and then that's it. Uh, and performs the computation and then it, then it terminates. Um, instead, what I could do is I could actually actually print something out. So in this case, I'm going to, I'm going to then include the print this number uh, um, uh, function that we, that we had before, making sure that I include the input output stream uh, library because I need that for, for standard out. And so once I've, once I've declared this, this, uh, this, this function, um, then I can, then I can, um, I, I can then uh, call that after assigning after. So then in, the, in terms of the program execution, Will will um, will my function will execute that number gets assigned to number y, then print this number will be given that number y, uh, the result of that assignment, and then print it out to to standard output once it's called. And so in this case, our compiler will give no errors and it will simply output uh, output a seven, and that's it. So given that we have we have the ability to to write functions in this way. We can write the the operations for our calculator as uh, we can write we can write those operations for our calculator as functions. And so let's go through those uh, one by one. So if we had addition, so addition takes in takes in two arguments and takes in first operand and a second operand, and then we'll add those together. So in this case, we should note that functions can take multiple arguments when they're separated by commas, noting that each operand that each input argument to the function has to have it has to have a data type associated with this. And so in this case, both of our both of our, our input arguments are floating point numbers. And so once we do this, we can add these to this this function will add two numbers together and then return the result. Uh, similarly, we can do a subtraction. So our subtraction in this case is just going to do it a little bit differently in that instead of returning, instead of just taking the two operands and returning them directly, 
uh, we're going to take those two arguments and we're going to create a local variable. So this uh, this 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 variable will be will be will will be declared, and that decla that declaration only decla only exists with inside the function. So we can only use this this variable difference inside of this function. Everywhere else, no other function knows about it. But inside of this, we can then say, uh, we can then assign to our, our local variable the difference between operand and operand, operand one and operand two, and then return that difference. And so, uh, and so the, ver the value of difference will be, um, will be sent back to the, to the collaring program. We can also do multiplication. Um, and so just noting ahead of time that this won't work properly, but let's, but, um, but basically let's say that let's, let's, you know, let's for, let's not think about that and just sort of say, if we, if we, if we carried this through, if we carried this, this logic, we could do, um, we could, you know, we could, we could give all three of our, 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 we could give all three of our parameters to it. We could say, but we'll give both operands and the result, which will be the product. All of those will be given as, um, as input variables. So what we could do in this case is that we can say we can say operand one times operand two, assign that into into the variable product, and that should you know and and so because product you know if that's a variable that were, was that was given into us, then it should um, then it should uh, it it should it should just um, that that the variable in the calling program should be updated if we do this assignment in here, and that just won't work. That's not that's not a good idea. Um, because what thing that we should note that our, that function arguments by by default are what we call pass by value. Whenever you whenever you send give an argument into into the into the, the um, into the program, a copy of it of it is made, and then that serves as a local variable so that we can then work on it. So that when you modify the variable inside the function, it will not change its value outside of the function. And so we can't do this, or at least we can, but but it won't behave the way we, we would like for it to. But we can fix that with uh, with just a one simple change, in that if we add an ampersand to the name to the to the to the to the to the variable name when it's passed in, this will change it from being passed by value to passed by reference. And so now, once we pass this variable in by reference, any changes we make to 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 uh, to this variable inside of the function will also have an effect on the on on that variable in the calling function that we have that we that we give as the um as the input argument. So we can we can then we can then you know we can then have these changes that occur in our um in our uh in our code uh be um or can, it, these changes that occur in our function be applied to uh to 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 our um to our program execution outside of the function. Um, and so this is kind of nice because then we can we can have our two operands in our product and we don't have to do a separate assignment. We should note that that in this case we we are not returning any value. We're just doing this assignment directly. So if no value is returned, it's just good form to just return void as the return type. It's just saying this function is not returning anything. Uh, similarly, we could do this for division. So note we're passing in two operands that are passed by by value. Those aren't going to change. And then we pass a float in that's going to be our quotient. That will change based off of the assignment. And we should just, and it's just good form to return a Boolean whenever for, for your program. So if, if, um, if your program ran, if your function ran and no errors occurred, then you just send false to say no errors occurred. If you send true, then you're saying something bad happened and, and that needs to get handled. So given that we've described this, the, the, we've had these, uh, we've dis described these, uh, these functions where we can, where we have different, and so these are just showing four different ways to sort of do roughly the same thing as different, different expressions of functions. We could use those to then help organize our code. So we can take these, uh, these function de definitions and, uh, and we can put them into our, into our calculator. So, uh, so we can just make a little space in our calculator right here and then uh, just move them in and, uh, and voila, we now have access to these functions because they're declared in our, in our calculator. Great. Um, so now if I have those function declarations, I can then, uh, I can then move up. And those functions, are, those declarations are by themselves aren't necessarily useful. I still have to call them. So I'm gonna consider those func de function declarations uh, to be right here. I'm going to then, uh, and I'll just note that these are, that, that those are functions that are available to us. And I'm just gonna use this, this sort of nomenclature. Um, so this is just, I'm just gonna use 
So for instance, for add two numbers right here, um, you know, this doesn't mean the function itself. It's just my way of referring to it. You know, it's just sort of like it's nickname. Add two numbers nickname is like is just sort of saying add two numbers with two parentheses. It's the nickname to say there's a function out there that says add two numbers. Um, so uh, so that that's there. And so we're going to say that we have we have these functions that are now available to us as well as our as our main function. Um, and so from main, if we're going to, if our, if we want to use this as, our, as part of our calculator, our main function now has to, has to then, has to then call these functions and then use them in context. And so, um, so these function calls are, are, are really important. So we should note that when I'm calling, uh, when I'm calling add two numbers, so add two numbers will then, will then pass and then call. Uh, so when I call add two numbers here, it's going to call this function. I'm just going to go up here, bop, bop, bop. And so what it's gonna do is we're gonna take in my number that we've gotten from the user and my other number we've gotten from the user. We'll pass those in as inputs and then those will get returned to us. The, the, the addition of those two numbers will get returned to us. And then we're gonna output that to the, to the standard output in, in the context of, uh, in the context of, our, um, of our execution. Um, similarly, for when I'm doing the subtraction, I'll have my two numbers here and I'm gonna call that, and it's gonna call subtract two numbers. And, um, and note, you know, we don't, you know, it, we're gonna get the same behavior, except now that there's a, now there's a local variable uh, that's, 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 uh, that, that's um, helping us do this inside of the function. Um, another thing that, that we're gonna do is we can, um, if we're thinking about how to do this multiplication, note that we've got a number of things that we have to do here. So we have to first, declare a variable that's gonna be our product number in, in main. So it's a local variable that only sits inside of main. We're gonna then take our, the number, the two numbers we gotten from the user. And then we're also gonna give product number right here as our, third, uh, as our third argument, right? And so product number is then going to, is then going to become, uh, is then gonna become this product variable when we, once, we do the, once we do the call, once we do the function call. And so now, once so so this product number, this variable, is then going to be given to uh, to the to this function. Um, it's going to then take the two operands, assign it into into product, and that it will then change this change our variable product number in our main function. And so when we do that, then we that once we've computed that, then then we can just work with that as as any other variable, and it would be output to the to the to standard output right there. Um, and then again, our quotient is going to be is going to behave in the same way as our as our as our um, as our uh, as our product did. Our division is going to behave like the way our, our product does. And so when we look at uh, at what happens when our um, when we when we execute this, we get all the we get all the right the right numbers. Um, so twenty two plus our, our addition twenty two plus seven, the function worked. Twenty two minus seven, I mean twenty two plus seven gets equals twenty nine. Our addition worked. Uh, 22 minus seven uh, got us 15, our subtraction worked. 22 times seven is 154, our multiplication worked. And our division got, got us our approximation of pi. So great, so that worked out really well. And so, uh, so what I'm gonna do moving forward is because, you know, cause you can see I'm having to break up my code all over the place. You know, I'm having to use multi, I'm having to, to look at different sections of it. It can, it can be, it can get to be a bit much. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to show fun if we've already de defined a function and declared it. Uh, you know, we're just going to assume that it's available somewhere in the source file, and we're just going to consider those to be available somewhere. But we're but we're not going to but we're not going to list them out. They'll just be in this in this upper corner here. Um, those will be functions that are available to us. And then um, and then for whatever the code snippet is that we're looking before, I'm just going to put the the name of the function at the at the top of it, so we know that that's the function. That we're, that's the current scope for the code that we're, that we're looking at here. And so this is what this is just sort of going to be the layout of what this looks like moving forward. Um, so so now, but if I if I show my entire main, you can see that things got cleaned up a bit, right? And so so now I've got, you know, now I have uh, you know, now instead of having to have you know operations all over the place, now I'm just calling functions and they're doing a lot of the work for us. Um, one thing we should note. With this is that main itself is also a function, and so it's uh, it's good form if that uh, if we um, if we have main itself return zero because our operating system might want to know 
like if if the operating system may say all right this fun this our program returns zero so there were no errors and if we return you know a, a, a non a non-zero number usually that non-zero number is indicative of some error code that occurred and so let's just good form to return that knowing that main itself is also a function so we're gonna we're gonna add that to our, our list of functions as well one thing we should note is our core, our code is still quite disorganized. It's still, you know, you look at this and you're just sort of like, what, you know, you know, from, you know, to just somebody who's coming new to it, you're just like, there's a lot of stuff happening here. What's going on? Um, and, you know, and, and probably, you know, and there's no order to it. There's no logical order. And there's just a lot of redundancy. We're doing a lot of the same things over and over and over. Um, and so what I, what I would say is maybe we could try just thinking about what is our code doing and try to use functions to, to provide some sort of uh, some structure to it that's that's much more um, that's much more understandable. And so let's just let's just ask ourselves what what is this code doing at its core? So you know so we can we can just take a minute, you know, think about you know just take a look at this code. What what are the core functions that are that it's doing that we really wanted to that we really want to you know that we really should focus on and maybe turn into functions themselves. Think about it. Well, when I look at it, I see I see really three things that this code is doing for us. One is it's giving us two numbers. We have to get two numbers that serve as our operands. We have to perform all the operations on our operands. So we're going to perform all the, all the all the arithmetic operations, and then we're going to output those results to the screen. And so really this is what our, these are the main three things that our, that our program is doing. And so, you know, so I'm sparing you all the, all the versions that I did in between um, and jumping just straight to, to version 41 of this. If I just think about those basic, those basic, basic calls, um, then really, you know, I can just make my, my function. I can just make a calculator, just work in four function calls, get two numbers, right? I can get a number then get another number. And then I can perform all of my operations and then I can output the results to the screen. And so now my calculator is really just some variable declarations followed by, uh, followed by, um, by four function calls and that's it, you know? And so, so now when I'm reading this, now if I'm somebody who's reading my code, who's reading this code, it, it's just much more clear, get a number, get another number, perform the operations, output results, and then we're out and it works, right? And so, um, so this really is, you know, so this gives us, a, this has, just gives us a lot of organization to our code. Um, I'm not gonna go into what I put into each of these, uh, <laughs> into each of these, uh, these functions. I'm gonna leave that as something for, for you to do. Um, but what we should note is that, um, is that, you know, I'm just, I'm just gonna give you the, the, the function headers here, the, 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 high, the first line uh, of each of these. Uh, and so, um, so note that for, for getting a number, um, my get, my, I'm, I'm, giving in a, um, I'm giving in a variable that should be, that should be changed. And so or giving a, a, a variable that will be a number and that will be changed, that will be assigned or, or changed and then given back out and then returned back to us through that, through that input parameter. Um, and we're going to do that twice, and so that's that's going to be uh, that 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 function will be called twice. Then we'll perform operations. Note that I'm giving in two op two operands, two operands that are passed by values that those don't change inside the program. Those don't need to be changed. But then I'm also given um, variables for sum or input uh, imp uh, function arguments for sum, difference, product, and quotient. And so those will be updated at, through through this function. And then, uh, and then my my output results function is going to have those same six variables, although none of those will be will be altered by the um, by the function itself. And so I'll let you think about what should go inside of there. But that's um, but these are the these are this is what we're expecting from uh, this is what would should be what have to be completed for for our calculator. If I uh, and so I would I would ask you to to think about how you would how you would write those functions. And so you know give us some thought. That's why we're here to help during class time, it's please do reach out to us during class time. Class time is meant to be interactive. We can help you uh, think about how you can write these functions and, and make, these, make these work for you. And so once they're done, they, they go into our, into our list of functions that are available. 
And I can tell you that my version 41 still works still good, you know? And so, um, so this is what, this is what, what came out of my, uh, my version 41, but we should note that our calculator still needs, uh, still needs a fair amount of, uh, still a fair amount of attention in that, uh, that if we think about what our calculator actually does in, in practice, um, you know, we don't provide all the operations to the, you know, to, to, to the user. They give us two, you know, it's not that they give us two operands and then they, then we, we, we run on those. They actually give us an operand, then an operator, then another operand, and we produ produce the result. Not only do that, does it produce that result, we, it does it in succession. It takes the result from, from one and then um, use that as the first operand for the, for the next operation where you can then get a, the next operator, the next operand and compute, and then do another successive computation. And so we're going to build up to doing that as we, as we move along. Um, we should also note that we can get, we can get run into some issues and that, uh, that sometimes if we asked for, if we asked our, our system to divide by zero, what happens in that case? I wanna, we should continually think about that. Um, so with this, uh, you know, so, so we're gonna continue to work on our calculator. Um, so, so as we, as we, as we've sort of shown here, we've built up from hello world, done version 24 of our calculator. Now we've modularized our, our calculator into functions. And so we're moving down the list right here. Um, next, next time we'll cover, we'll cover branching and iterators. Um, so we can start to just do one operator at a time and maybe change, start to start to build on top of them together. Um, and so with that, those, that will, that will be coming up. Please do reach out to us in class if you have any questions. Um, we are here to help you build up your, your code base. And uh, with that, I just want to thank you again for your time. Looking forward to, to seeing you during our class time. Thank you.